One night I was out with a group that included both friends and people who were at that point strangers to me, but who were friends of one of the people in the group. At some point in the evening, conversation turned to race, and I braced myself, knowing that the opportunity had once again been presented for some of the white bonding I had grown to expect in these situations. Sure enough, I wouldn't be disappointed. Hey! How many black chicks does it take to change a light bulb? Suffice it to say that the joke was every bit as racist as I had assumed it would be when he began. When he was done, most everyone remained quiet or rolled their eyes. A few people laughed nervously and a few others said something like, Oh that's terrible, you shouldn't tell jokes like that. I saw my opening, and decided to take it, hey. I've got one, too. Did you hear the one about the white guy who told this really racist joke because he assumed everyone he was hanging out with was also white? No, I haven't heard that one. Actually, there's no joke. That was just my way of telling you I was black. My mom is black. Oh my god. I am so sorry. I didn't know. I'm not black. But I find it interesting that when you thought I was, you apologized for the joke. In other words, you know it was wrong to say, so that if you'd been around a black person knowingly, you never would have said it. So why did you feel comfortable saying it in front of us? You must not think very much of white people. Huh? What do you mean? I mean that you must think all whites are racist. And not just racist, but the kind of racists who like hearing racist jokes. Otherwise, you wouldn't take a chance making that kind of comment around white folks who you don't know. So tell me, why do you think so little of whites, to say nothing of your views of blacks? He stammered for a few seconds, but instead of getting angry, instead of telling me to get a sense of humor, he finally conceded the point, and we proceeded to have a conversation about race. There is no way we'd have had that talk had I jumped him or chastised him in the traditional manner. But by engaging him in the process, a reflective process which called into question how he knew what he knew, how did he know we were white, and how did no we would all approve of racist jokes? I was able to stretch out the dialogue a bit and ultimately contribute to making it more productive than it otherwise would have been. The beauty of resisting racism in this way is that by doing it, we as whites sent a message to other whites. A message that says they can't take anything for granted. They can't assume that they know our views. They can't be too sure that an attempt at white bonding will be met with acceptance by others. This is important because racism, especially of an institutional nature, requires the collusion of many persons. The lone bigot can't accomplish it. So by throwing racists off balance, even that much, we increase the cost to racists of acting out their racism.